Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gamer Tudicom video, it would appear that Microsoft are indeed working on a die shrunk version of the APU inside the Xbox One. This would, of course, lead to the rather clear and obvious prediction that an Xbox One Slim is indeed going to be coming at some point in the future. So, this information comes to us actually from LinkedIn. A chap there who is a senior manager over at AMD, his name is D uh, Daniel McDonnell, has this to say in his profile, successfully planned and executed the first APU in Microsoft's Xbox One console in a 28NM technology and a cost-reduced derivative in 20NM. And then another key point of his profile uh, read as follows, assembled and grew two cross-site execution teams for two successful Xbox One APU revisions. This included developing a key technical leads in senior positions allowing for successful executions and future team expansion to handle more socks. So this is also an article because we're going to be going into some technical details here, um, including links to the original sources and I've also included some images if you wish to look at it. <clears throat> so I originally found out about this um, over at Beyond 3D. I'm not a member but I sometimes lurk their forums and it just so happened that I come across it. So a chap on the Beyond 3D forums, his name would be to properly credit the guy, Mosen, that's M-O-S-E-N, I've linked to his uh, forum post, once again this article, and it would appear that Microsoft are of course transitioning to 20NM. So at the moment, just to give you some background on the Xbox One's current situation in relationship to the PlayStation 4 and, well, the technology in general, I do go further into this as I said in um, the article, but I want to at least give you the basics in this video. Um, currently, the X One's chip is actually larger and more expensive to produce than the PlayStation 4's, despite the fact that it's well inherently slower. Um, this is thanks to the fact that the ES RAM is actually built on die. Now, the reason that Microsoft, of course, went with the ES RAM is because they were a bit concerned over yields regarding GDDR5. But that's beside the point. Microsoft went with what they did, but it's meant that they've got less room inside for compute units. But even so, the die has been bigger, uh, it's larger, so it's costing them more cash to produce, basically, the die. So, the process of shrinking the die down to 20NM is effectively going to make the console cheaper to produce. And we'll go more into the specifics in just a moment, but I also need to point out something else in regards to this console, or potential new console. The LinkedIn profile is not currently showing as active, however... Um, I'm guessing the person's took, taken it down maybe after a bit of a bollocking from either AMD or Microsoft. But there's actual still evidence. First of all, obviously, you can never take anything from the internet. There's screenshots and stuff that are already been uh, taken from this, so it's a bit linked now. But there's also evidence from Microsoft themselves. They actually advertised an electrical engineer, and there are some key points, once again, in the job description. Development of memory subsystem with evaluating different solutions for options for performance, functionality, and stability, cost, and risk of for the memory subsystem within the platform being key points. But the final one, and this one's almost like the nail in the coffin, if you will, which kind of tells you what they're going to be doing in the future. Prior experience, it reads, the bugging and bringing up memory subsystems, specifically familiarity with DDR3 slash DDR4, experience with DRAM memory subsystems and DRAM memory training algorithms. So that's lots and lots and lots of words, but what you can see is that primarily the technologies for the Xbox One are going to be remaining pretty consistent. Now what I do want to point out before we get any confusion for any people who are slightly less technically inclined, this is not going to be, and I imagine many of you probably don't think this anyway, but I just want to clarify, this is not going to be like the Xbox 2. This is not going to be a follow-up to the Xbox 2. It's also most likely, despite the fact that TSMC, uh, I've also provided a link for this along with the, their own information, they have mentioned that, look, um, the voltage requirements, the power requirements, shall I say, to be more correct, are about 25 lower. So, cut by about 25%. Clock speeds could theoretically raise by about 30%, shrinking down from 28 to 20. But, and you knew there was going to be a but, it's unlikely that's going to happen. Because if it were, 
we could have a situation where certain games just wouldn't be able to run on this new Xbox. So what this is going to be, in a very simple way to put it, is a slim version of the Xbox. This is exactly the same as the PlayStation 2 Slim. It's the same as the, you know, the uh, small Xbox One, as our Xbox 360. Hell, even the Master System and the Genesis had multiple revisions. This is pretty standard. So it would appear that the work for this has been done. Um, so, in other words, they've basically got it to the most part taped out. They've got it off the drawing board and they've probably started to create some revisions of this internally and figuring out what they're going to be doing. But we can, trans we can translate the reason they've not seen it on store shelves. They've probably just finished it, but we're not going to likely be seeing it for some time. And that's due to the fact that 20NM is still pretty expensive and still has yield issues. I also reported on news a while back that AMD's own R9 300 series is going to be basically moving to 28, uh, sorry, to 20NM, and Maxwell's also going to be moving to 20NM, but they're going to be next year. Console parts are probably going to be even longer to come, because it's like, <clears throat> basically this is yield issues. That you need to make sure that if you're transitioning to a new part, that well, a new uh, process, you don't want, and this is a complete, you know, ridiculous you know, example, but I'm just using it purely to kind of give you an idea. Let's just assume that currently their failure rate is 1 in 10 of the APUs, and obviously we don't know what their failure rate is, but and it's probably going to be far lower than this, but once again I'm just using it as a pure example. Let's assume currently their failure rate is 1 in 10 for their APUs, for the Xbox One's APU. Well, let's assume they're shrinking down because currently the process isn't too mature, let's assume that goes to like 2 in 10. So in other words, 1 in 5 are balked. That would basically reduce the fact that it's costing them less per unit, because obviously more units are broken. Um, they're going to that big silicon heaven, if you will. So it, it, it's likely we're not going to be seeing this for some time. Now, in regards to the memory, the curiosity factor is the fact that it does mention DDR4. <clears throat> to give you a bit of background on this, Microsoft are currently using DDR3 running 2133 MHz, that's on a 256-bit memory bus. That provides the now infamous 68GB per second memory bandwidth, right? Simples. Microsoft could be going with a couple of options. The first would be LP DDR3. LP, by the way, stands for low power. This is typically found in mobile devices, and, well... As the name would probably suggest to you, it requires lower power than DDR3 counterparts. It's also got high memory density. This means that theoretically, there would be fewer components that needs to be soldered onto the board. I have provided a few images of the Xbox One motherboard inside the article, if you so desire, so you can kind of see what I mean. But essentially, it would mean that the board would be smaller. And if the board's smaller, it means the console ch uh, chassis itself could be smaller. The problem with DDR3, uh, DDR3 is that current well, LP DDR3 is it's still fairly expensive. Um, <coughs> it's an option. The other one, since they do mention DDR4, logically they could be considering DDR4. And DDR4, of course, does have lower power requirements. It also has other benefits as well, but it would also most likely require some re engineering of the Xbox One. Now, I'm not saying they won't go that route. But the price of DDR4 uh, at the moment is still, uh, at least the last time I looked, which wasn't too long ago, maybe I'm completely wrong now, but it was only a while back I looked, DDR4 is still more expensive than DDR3. So it doesn't really make sense for them to say, <laughs> let's cost reduce and then go to DDR4. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense. It's possible we'll be seeing a third revision of the Xbox One. Let's just say the Xbox One we've got now is revision A. There could be a revision B, which is going to 